His name is, don't run, don't run away Robert. His name is Robert, he's a master gardener and he will be talking to us about how we can grow our own food. Right of applause for that. And I got into growing things with my grandfather, Mr. Isaac Watson, from Jamaica, St. James. And when he came over here, quite an elderly gentleman, he started growing things in mum's garden, in his other two daughters' garden, then all his neighbours, he started asking to grow their things in. Then he got me involved, because he was a bit old, so I had to go and plant the can for him, and he kept calling me to go and do this, and I did it. So um, that's how I got involved, and end up getting my own allotment. And um, after getting my own allotment, because these people have been in the allotment for many years, and I've just turned up. And all of a sudden they're all asking me. And I thought, well, oh, that's a minute, you know, I've been here for 20 years, I've just come here. So anyway, because I found out that maybe it's because what my granddad left me, our new things, I thought, well, of course, I better take this further. So I went to Cape Manor and got a degree. From that, obviously, um, I've got organisations calling me, like Back to Earth, Garden Organic, um, schools are going to do projects, so that's how I end up being here right now. But the most important thing is, a lot of people think things are hard to grow. And also when they see this on the back, Master Gardener, I'm no Master Gardener. I'm no Master Gardener, I don't know, hardly half of them to know the garden. But I do know I could grow some cabbage and whatever. After growing all the local vegetables we can grow here, you know, tomatoes and all those things like that. I decided, well, let's move it a bit further, but we have to colour loop. And every time I go to Jamaica, I smoke things back. <laughs> Not weed. <laughs> 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 I've got, I've got an Aki tree at home. I've got a um, Koka, Dashi, and all those kind of things. I tend, I even um, not make. Because where I come from, um, my grandfather on the other side of the family, we've got a big acre, my uncle's there growing everything. So when I go down the other side, I raid it all and take all the seeds. Okay. So I have them all here. So I start to grow them now, and I have a project um, called Back to Earth Public Farm, where I do, they call it exotic. Chor chop, this kind of bunny pepper, colour, all oh, these things. So they think I'm a great exotic guy at the world. I had to send these guys, these guys here, they've got a big place in uh, Coventry called um, Garden Organic, where this doctor, Anton, his name is, he grows it, he has to call me. And I've showed him how to grow chor So I'm growing chor now. So it's not difficult, it's very easy. Now, if you've got a space in your garden, some people say I've got no room. I've got no space to plant it. But I can show you after this, you can go and look where I am and I can show other things and tile it. And I've got a picture out there to show you. So you can go things almost anywhere. Right? Now the next thing that people keep saying is too expensive, I can't afford it. But let me tell you something. If I don't bring back the, the Scotch bonnet pepper from Jamaica, you all go shopping and buy your Scotch bonnet, don't even cook it. You all cook with Scotch bonnet, most of you anyway. When I cook with scotch bonnet, if the scotch bonnet is nice, the seed is there. You cook the seeds there. You just leave it there to dry. Yeah. The old girl said, well, we've got nothing to plant in. How I germinate my seed in the beginning, when I was very poor. Um, you know the Chinese takeaway things you have? Mm -hmm. Little things that you have a Chinese with a lid on? Mm -hmm. All you've got to do with that is put some fine compost in it. And your, compost, your, your scotch bonnet seed that you dried from two months ago, Sprinkling on top, a little bit of compost on top of that, and moist it. Put the lid back on it, give way the next one, Scotch bonnet's coming up. Wow. This is a Scotch bonnet plant, but I bought a small one, but my ones are big enough now with papers on, but I just thought I bought, I bought this small one. This is a Scotch bonnet plant, growing the same way I've told you. Now when this gets bigger, I put in a larger pot, mm. until the final the large, because Scotch bonnets are very difficult to grow outside in the ground, mm. but they will grow in pots, very, very good, especially if you look after it. So this is a scotch bonnet and plant, I planted from a pepper I bought down West Green Road. There you go. And the next thing, you all love thyme. You cook your thyme a lot, don't you? Yeah. When you go to the shop and buy this thyme, it costs 80 pence a bunch all the time. This was an 80 pence bunch thyme, right? But cook with that and a few sprigs put in the pot and leave it. Look at it now, it's flourishing. Now if I keep this, until next spring and I put it in my garden, I will have time forever if you look after it. You won't have to buy any more time because this will multiply as well every year. 
Um, I've left the colour look outside. Well, I've got Jamaican brown leaf colour look. They're outside. Same thing with colour look. If you can get yourself a couple of plants of colour look, normally if you know anyone in allotment, especially any black people in allotment, every black man have colour look on the allotment right now. And all you need is a couple of plants. And once you have a couple of plants of colour look in your back garden, if you look after it well, Eat some of it by all means, and cut a little, if you plant the right time, you get three lots of cuttings of it. Because when you cut, it shoots back up again. But if you ever leave one to seed up, let it seed, get the seed, and leave it. Eat all the leaves around it by all means, but leave this seed on top. You see, for in spring, all the colour will come up your back garden. You don't have to plant it again. So growing things is very, very easy, but people tend to think it's hard. The hardest thing in growing is weeding and watering. Everything else is pure simple, 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 simple. So that's how I get involved in growing, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. And if there's anybody who wants to ask me any questions about growing and things, I will answer for you, hopefully. Yeah? Any questions? I'm interested in the chocho. I'm not sure, does it grow under the grove? Right. Or? Okay. Now, chocho, don't make this mistake by going to the shop and buy one of them chocho and things. It will grow, it will run like a vine. When you come outside and look where I've got a photograph of mine with the chocho, -cho. runs like a vine, you need to make a harbour for it to run upon. But what happens is, if you buy the one you see in the shop, it will run, but it will not pay. It's a special variety which all allotment people have and we'll share it and pass them around. You'll keep one. If you want to grow back an next one, you don't eat them all. Because if you eat them all, you've got to find another one because it grows from itself. You look to know how the chocho grow up through the vine just coming out from the back and it grows by itself. And you plant the whole thing back again. And if you keep at least a couple of those chocho every year, you continue to have chocho. Unless you know someone else who have that particular variety of that days. That's how it grows. Yes? Sorry. Uh, sorry, um, do you grow your stuff all organic? And how do you yes. keep away pests? Organic. Do Depends on right. Pests. Pest. You have yeah. lots of pests. You have, I'll start with the biggest one first, I think, over here, which is the fox. Yeah. They're pests. Well, I'm going to tell you how I deal with my face. Fox. Shoot them. No. <laughs> you see, folks don't like to have to know that there's anybody else near or dangerous. So you see, when I have my garden, I piss round it. Oh. <laughs> when, when the fox come, I smell that it runs. I've like to watch it. I've got like to watch it. I said, see what come and see what comes. He's gone. Yeah. Another thing we have problem with is, uh, you wouldn't believe, we're talking about slugs, slugs is bad as well, but you have, would you believe it or not, pigeon, eagle, brassicas, red brassicas like cabbages and Brussels sprouts. When they're very young, especially if you plant winter cabbages, you're in trouble. Pigeons will come into town. Yeah, they all my cabbages. Yes, they're all the pigeons. And then you also have the white fly, butterfly, the cabbage fly, butterfly. They will lay their eggs on that and they will eat it down. You have the slugs, but the slugs normally go for things like cucumbers and, and candles and things like that. But the, when you plant brackets, brackets out, make sure you have a net. You must net it, because otherwise the pigeon, when they get large enough, you can take the net off, because the pigeon don't want to eat it when it's too big, only when it's very soft and tender, they will eat it. So that's how you get rid of it. Slugs, there's other ways, like there's beer traps, you could have a little Tray the same Chinese thing with beer in it, put it around it, they yeah. will fall in the beer and they will drown. They'll go for the beer, they'll go for the beer. It's just a guinea or something. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you can go out that night and pick them all off. I have a very good way of dealing with my slugs. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fine enough, someone was saying to me just now that they didn't go enough in it uh, this year because of the work like that. Who we'll getting that as an excuse? The weather's always going to be bad here, you're never too sure. Yeah. But how I always come back, man, because I've got a. Um, apart from my allotment where I've made my own greenhouse, um, that's when before I was working, I'm working now. And the way I made my greenhouse, I don't know if you know in London what they're doing now. They're He's building all these houses and they're all getting double glazed windows. Mm. But they chuck away the old windows. Mm. I picked them all up, loads of windows glass, and I made it cost me nothing, just in my spare time. So that's why I'm a lot. But I'm fortunate now to have a 40 foot quality on this project we have. So, what you can do, you're watching the weather, because it doesn't matter what it says, because people grow things, because, oh, it says to grow this in there, it says to grow that in there. It has to be combined with the weather. So, what I do, like I said before, in my kitchen, that's why, that's why I never do behind myself, you know, the thing Because <laughs> <laughs> my kitchen was like a greenhouse, because I can't wait. Because things like scotch bonnet, they take a very long time to germinate. And if I was waiting until the weather is good, I won't have scotch bonnet, because it would be too late by the time we plant it, they will be weather be gone. So I have them on my kitchen windowsill, in that same container. Even though it's cold outside, the kitchen is warm. So by the time the weather's changed, I come May, when it's really good, hopefully, there's proper size of the plant out, so you have to work with the weather, watch it and know when to put out, when not to. Yeah? Rain is very good for the you know, we're all dying for rain now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? All grow up gardeners want rain now, but you must know what to put out, when to put out. Yeah? Um, another question is, another thing I get asked, oh it's too late now to plant anything. You can plant things all year round. You don't, you, Garlic is planted by um, November, October, November. You put the garlic out and onions, and you could even grow beans. And there's a certain type of lettuce that grows all the way around. Most lettuce can grow all the way around. So there's, you can have something growing in your garden right through. So there's no risk to it. Really. Any more questions? Yeah. Well, far enough because things like thyme. They're very used to hardy conditions with soil, with, with stones and things because it's like an iron so they're very used to hardy conditions. So you don't have to compost it too much. You don't put too much manure in it. But they're very good the hardy plants. So, yeah. Okay, everybody, I'm sure you'll agree a wealth of knowledge from yes. Robert. Yes, you have morning from my project. These are sweet peas. Now, if you don't believe that they taste different from when you grow it, I would you to taste, eat one of my peas. And I bet you never eaten any peas like this. So anybody want one? Yeah, eat it raw. We we'll share some. <laughs> out of ten, guys, how are the peas out of ten? Are they ten, yeah? Wow. Just <laughs> Okay, I think for the taste of those peas, Robert just put the Jolly Dream Giant out of business. So, on that, Robert, come and take a bow, man. Come and take a bow. Come, Robert, are you selling those peas? Are you selling them? Because you just been on my job, right? Because I ate them all already. You have them for sale? No, I've got other things to sell out here. You have other things to sell. You know where we are, we're a natural garden, not just myself. We've got Black Oak Prince, Paulette, and Pinta. We're on the stage up there. If you want to know anything else, come up there and we'll search it. Robert, one more thing. When the neighbours call the police on me for cleaning the garden, can I tell them you've got to tell them to you? Tell them to this man here. The master garden. Thank you.